In any alarm solution, there is one sensor that is mandatory in an installation, and it is the fire detector. And today, while well, we're looking at the Ajax Fire Protect 2, this is their heat smoke detector. You also have it available with heat smoke and CO detection. So we'll see how this sensor works, what makes it unique comparing to the other sensor on the market, and what technology Ajax has installed inside of this device. All right, let's get to it. We removed it from the box, a nice looking design, and I'm sure everyone is looking at the surface plate right here. So this is the function button from Ajax. So this is where you can actually stop the alarm and also test your product. So this leads to the other section that we have on here. So you have many explanations written on the device itself. And if you look at the top of the device, well, you have LED lights. So you have one for the alarm, so it will turn red when the alarm goes off. You also have a yellow light for any kind of fault that is happening. So if your smart bracket goes off, for example, and you also have a green light, so when everything is okay. I need to mention that this is the RB model, so it's the replaceable batteries. They have pre-installed seven years batteries inside of this device. Now we're gonna try the function button. As I mentioned, it is the old surface right here, and it is so different from the other smoke detectors that we know. We all have this image, you have your smoke detector on top, so on your ceiling and you're trying to hit the button with a broom, it, it's difficult. So you either have to go on a ladder, try to remove it, but this one, anywhere on the plate, so if you push it on the corner, if you use your old end, this is your button, making it really easier to stop your alarm. Now we're gonna actually show you how to push the button to start your alarm. So if you want to test your Fire Protect 2, all you need to do is use this plate and literally push it down and this will send a signal to the hub, it will come back to the Fire Protect 2 and you will hear the buzzer like this one. Not only that, but you have a red LED that appears, so I'm going to do it again for you to see. So I push the button again, so pushing it down and then you have the red that appears under the alarm signal. So this is what you would hear now, <laughs> my, my eardrum is buzzing. So it is an 85 decibel buzzer, so it makes a lot of noise. So if you're sleeping, for sure you would wake up. And another nice functionality when we're talking about this Fire Protect 2 and this buzzer sound is actually that you can interconnect multiple Fire Protects 2 to uh, the old solution. Meaning that if you have a big facility and you need to cover a, a lot of areas and there is a fire in a specific room, your fire protect goes off, send the signal to the hub, the hub send the signals to the other fire protects and they all start buzzing. So it will indicate there is something going on and then people can exit the premise safely and this way, well, it's just better because when there is a fire, we need to act quickly to try to avoid any kind of problem. So it's a nice function you have between your fire protects too. Now, there are two other LEDs that I mentioned. You have the fault one that will appear with a yellow light and the OK one for green light to mention that everything is fine with your device. A good way to test those LEDs is actually by removing the smart bracket on the back of your device. So if I remove the smart bracket, so I have it in my hand, you would see the yellow light has appeared on the device itself. And when I put it back, so I put it back on the device here, well, a green light appears to mention that is okay. So I put it on the side like this, I remove it, then you have the yellow light, and again, put it back, you have the green light. And this is all because there is a temper switch behind the device itself and it's always triggering. So yes, you receive a, a notification on your application, but you also have this indicator. It's especially useful when we're talking about a low battery because you will receive a notification on your app, but if you missed it for some reason, you will have a yellow light that will stay light up. So always there, the yellow light for you to understand there is something wrong with your device. So this way you can go on your application and find exactly what's the problem with the Fire Protect 2. 
We kind of look at the outside build of the Fire Protect 2, but now we're gonna go in inside to see what makes it unique. And first off is the smoke chamber from Ajax. So the, you can actually remove the function button. So if you turn it counterclockwise like this, so you will hear a small click and you will access the smoke chamber of the device itself. So what makes this technology unique from Ajax is actually because it is impenetrable by dust and insects, meaning there is absolutely no cleaning to do. So you don't need to always remove it like other sensors to clean it up. And also, well, it prevents from any kind of false alarm. So it will not affect the sensors and everything will be protected at all time. And then there's nice new technology that Ajax provides here. Here's their algorithm, the Ace Flow 2. So when we're talking about this algorithm itself, it analyzes the data from the smoke that comes to the smoke chamber and that goes to the dual spectrum optical sensors. Now I'm gonna show you the sensors where they are placed. So under the smoke chamber, you can remove it. And here you see, well, <laughs> you don't really see them, but this is where the opti optical sensors are. So they are protected by the smoke chamber. The way they work is that, again, they analyze the data of the smoke. So they see the particle size in the smoke to make sure it's really smoke that comes from a fire. So if it is steam smoke, for example, it will not trigger an alarm because the particles, so the size, are smaller than smoke fire. And again, so everything is built inside and is analyzed through the ACE Flow 2 algorithm from Ajax. Another nice thing that we have here, so this is for the smoke, right? But now we're gonna see what heat detection means. So, and I'm sorry, I'm gonna butcher that word, but the thermistor that we have here on both sides that look like small LED lights, they're actually detecting any kind of high rise of heat. So if it is a smokeless fire, so it can be a chemical fire, for example, well, it will emit no smoke. So how do you understand that there is a fire going on? Well, it's with these sensors. So inside your application, the Fire Protect 2, uh, calculate the, the temperature in the room. So let's say here, it is 23 degrees Celsius but it also have a temperature threshold. So these sensor, when they sense it rise too fast, they detect a fire. So they detect the heat increase in the room and they will alarm you that something is going on. So you will receive a notification and you will hear the buzzer that we heard earlier. And everything again is protected under here. So now we have the smoke chamber from Ajax. So there is nice impenetrable smoke sensor. We have their dual spectrum optical sensor that is inside the smoke chamber and everything is covered by the function button. This kind of covers why this fire sensor is unique in, in this category. And now I also mentioned this is the RB model, so the replaceable batteries. So we're also going to show you how to replace the batteries from your fire protect. So by default, uh, it's seven years, so the battery are pre-installed and they last seven years. But if you receive the notification on your phone, what to do? So first off, as I mentioned before, you have a smart bracket on the back. So this is the first thing you need to remove. So to do this, you actually have to turn it and remove it from the slot. So you turn it counterclockwise, then remove the smart bracket. You can actually keep it, but I like to remove it because Ideally, when you replace the batteries, you need to close your device. So you hold this for three seconds, you close your device, and then you remove the screws that are on each corner of your Fire Protect 2. So right now, I'm using this screwdriver. It has a Phillips, so PH00. Uh, this is normally a bit that is used for cell phones, but it works perfectly for the Ajax device. So I'm gonna use it for these as well. So on each corner, you start removing the screws. All right. And now a good trick is you have your bracket for the smart bracket to hold them down. So rather than try to remove it, you can actually grab one side and pull it. So this way it's easy to remove the back of the device. All right, and now to replace the battery themselves. So 
All you need is I recommend using a flat screwdriver like this one. And what you will do is actually push the battery from the back and remove it like so. So you push it and pull up and the battery is removed. We are using CR12383 volt lithium batteries. It is easy to get, it is easy to replace, and how to actually put them back on? Well, you have a small graphic on the back plate right here, so saying that the positive should be down, the negative up, and here, well, it's vice versa. So the negative down and the positive up. So always look for this signage when you're replacing the battery, it is a nice guidance for you to put them back on. Now that we remove the smart bracket, as you know for the Ajax devices, all you need to do is open your application and you can scan the QR code behind the device to enroll your device. So now we did this on our Ajax application, now you have the page for the Fire Protect 2. And here, as you can see, it's getting really hot. It's already 26 degrees in the studio, but we are still filming for you guys. Not only that, but you see the jeweler signal strength. You see the battery that it is okay right now, so it is fully charged. That the lid is open, again, because I removed the smart bracket that I have right here to scan the QR code. So as soon as you put it back, well, it will be closed and you won't have a notification there. The smoke is clear, so no smoke was detected, and you have your temperature threshold. So it says it's not exceeded right now, because again, the detectors, the sensor, you have a heat detector in there, so if the temperature rises too fast. Now, if you click on the cogwheel on the top right of your device, here, as you can see, you have access to all the documentation you need for your Fire Protect 2, but the most important features are the toggles you see in the middle of the screen, so where it's written alert with a siren. That means if you have a home siren or a street siren at your place, well, those toggles will make it sound when there is a fire detector or a e detector, so if you receive an alarm on your application and the fire protect start buzzing, well, your siren will also emit a sound to notify everyone there is a fire going on. So you can turn them off, but please note this will not turn off the buzzing from the fire protect too. This is a matter of security and safety, so you cannot turn off this specific feature. This is only for external siren that you have at your place. With all that said, the Fire Protect 2 is now available in North America, so you can get your hands on this device. Again, there is the Eat Smoke, Eat Smoke with CO detector. I didn't mention it before, but it is part of the device. So inside where we saw the smoke chamber, you also have the CO detection. So it will analyze the air to see if there is any kind of monoxide carbon in there. So to prevent any kind of poison in the air itself from chemicals. So. You're interested, this is certified to the UL to the ULC, so you don't have to worry about that at all. And if you'd like to see maybe more videos about fire detection tools and other fire detection device, leave us a comment below. We'll make sure to review them and we'll see each other on the next one.